Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I'm Spacey Baltotelli. I'm a gadgeteer bat and a game developer. And today we're going to wind things down because it's been a very exciting week uh, for me. And I've interacted with a lot of really wonderful people um, from, from like all the sponsored streams and stuff. And there's so many people who have joined us in our community, um, even just as lurkers. But I, I do want to wind things down after a very nice week kind of like recharge my social batteries so I figured I would just like relax with everybody and just like draw pixel art keep things a little bit on the quiet side so I hope that's okay um <clears throat> uh oh my gosh so many good beans in the chat hi everybody today is my birthday sorry that I wasn't on any previous streams no 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 don't I'm be sorry stuff and improving my skills to be somebody so I'm taking a day off to spend time with you guys I wish everybody a pleasant day, a pleasant uh -huh. stream, and a pleasant time with a lovely bat lady, Spacey. Also, just one more thing. Oh, everybody give some love in the chat for Rob. Happy birthday. Nice. But yes, hello, hello, board fan Argo, Alex, Edge Drive, uh, Blake, Mike. What? 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 Lago Gas! Lago Gas! Yeah! Thank you so much for the 10 gifted subbies! Wow! 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 Double! The, hitting them, you're hitting me with a double Lago Gas? Oh my goodness, I feel so spoiled. Ah, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Rob. For a total of 20 gifted subs, and you just knocked us right all the way up to a level 4 hype train. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you. Ah, I feel blessed. Thank you so much. But, but come on, Rob, you know what? You shouldn't have to spend money on your birthday. <laughs> if anything, we should be spending money on you. Oh, but let me continue with my uh, hellos. Hi, Yomi. Hi, RIP Day. Hi, Health Sword. Hi, Eps. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Also, thank you, Ralph, for care combo. Okay, I'll take sleeping and stretchy. Now, to start things off today, I did want to showcase some really cool pixel art that uh, other members of the team have made um, since my last pixel art stream. So I'll do sleeping and stretchy, and then we'll get started on that. Mm. Oh my goodness. That feels good. Mm. Oh shoot, I forgot to um hold on, I'll redeem that once I um log into my mix it up account. I have I have to log in uh to an app in order to like in order for the invincibility trigger to work. Okay, okay, okay. It's going. Just give it a minute and then I'll redeem it for you. And I'll stretch during invincibility during invincibility. Uh okay. Yeah. Not sure why there's no music, but whatever. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I'm invincible. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> oh, it is very quiet, but it's there. Hmm. I wonder why that is. I haven't changed the, the volume. <clears throat> no. Okay, so. First of all. Uh, I did want to point out, like, like I have pointed out in my previous dev stream about how um, Carol has redone Crony's airspin animation, but I really wanted to show off um, how cool it looks compared to the old one. So this is the old one uh, that I did, and, and it was used as a base for the new one. Um, 
I sh wish there was a way to move the play button over to the right side so that my hand wouldn't obstruct. Uh, I wonder if there's something that I could do to kind of like rearrange the window in that regard. Oh, uh, I could just, uh, I could just play it through here in the preview. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just expand that a little bit and then you can see. Well, so, what? Oh, wait. Why is my hand so far off center? Hold on a second. Okay, uh, it's close. It's going to bother me if I don't fix this. Hmm. Because it's just like a little bit below. Um. Ah, where's, where's my hand? Where's my hand? I'm going to move the, the window of the hand a little bit. I have so many, uh, I have so many sources in my OBS, it just takes me a while to get through them. Okay, here we go, drawing arm. So for some reason, we are just like a little bit below. So I'm gonna kind of tilt that up a bit until it's like right here. I think that matches up now. Okay. Cool. Uh, thank you all so much for the hype train. Yeah. Alright, so... This is what it looks like before. <clears throat> I think it did a good- I think it did a good job. It, I just wanted to have it to be updated so that the sword- Like the- like the sword lines, like the smear frames, matched what Karo did for, um, the ground attack. And like, like for the ground attack, like he made them much thicker. So I wanted kind of a similar treatment uh, for the air spin attack. So uh, this is what Caro did. Um, you could tell right away, like if you compare um, both frames, like both of the starting frames, uh, you see how he moved the back sword this way. So there's already kind of an implied motion there that she's going to spin clockwise, which is something that I failed to do here. Um, so that's already an immediate, like, improvement. But then, like, she does this. He basically made her, like, spin at double speed. And, like, the smears are just, like, like way thicker and faster. I like it a lot. Um... I did notice, like, when, during, like, like, the initial draft of this updated animation that under haste, like, there'd be just, like, a bunch of white circles, um, <clears throat> like, there'd be, like, a trail trail of white circles because, like, the silhouette effect, uh, is copying, like, the smear frames, so they're, like, a little less, like, like, they're a little, they're a bit more, like, um, hollow and transparent than the ground attack, but still looks really good. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to show off is that to aid, further aid with navigation in the Sands of Time level, um, Edgedrive made a few, um, made a few little, like, giant, like, clocks, like, different types of clocks that we can put it to, to signify certain specific locations in the level. Uh, there's this wristwatch, which appears next to the second, um, hourglass room. Uh, and then there is a pocket watch that appears next to the first hourglass room. They're both right by the entrance, so the reason for that is so that when you, you flip the hourglass inside and turn the stage upside down, after you leave, you'll see that those two clocks will uh, will be upside down, so you get immediate visual feedback at what just happened. But yeah, Edge Drive did a really good job with these. And then there's one more, which is like a digital clock, <laughs> and that is on top of the entrance to the final chamber. and. I did something cheeky with all these. I made them act as platforms. So this acts as a platform um, to kind of like take you back up to the surface if you really want to. Um, but it's also such a distinguishable landmark that players are definitely not going to miss it. Because um, we did have like 
problems in the past where, um, where like the player would like see like the pit where the final like the, where the final door is, assume that like that will make them backtrack or something, and they'll try and jump over it and then get lost. So by putting the alarm clock down here, there's no there's no mistaking that like that that pit is somewhere that they should go to progress. Do the clock smash the current IRL time? Currently, it's purely decorative, but I have played around with the possibility that Crony could actually press the buttons on top and make it like display different things. <laughs> so, so if you push the button once, it shows the current stage time. Uh, if you press it again, maybe it shows the system time. Um, if you press it again, maybe it maybe it, maybe it says like funny words or something like "lol." Um. Uh, Oh, Revolution, hi! You wanted to end your stream to eat soon? Nice! Yeah, I hope you're doing well. I hope, uh, I hope you're enjoying the console version of Freedom Plan 2. Uh, and I'm quite curious to see, uh, if the game will be sped- will, if the game will have any new, like, renewed interest in, in its speedrunning community. Like, I wonder if people will, sp will prefer to speedrun on consoles or on PC. It's a thing. I assume PC will still be the go-to. Or just interesting things to, to think about. But yeah, this props to Edge Drive for all three of these clocks. <laughs> okay, um... At some point, I also want to work more on um, the different forms of the Wendigo boss fight. Uh, I, drew a, I drew a single frame of the bird form. Uh, I drew all the pieces of um, the water serpent form. Uh, I consider this to be done. It's it's completed enough that we can actually start programming the boss. Uh, and then I also have um, like the final form, which I think it just needs like I just need to fill in the silhouette. And typically, what I do with bosses is, is I think about what parts of their bodies will be involved with attacks, and I make sure to add contrast to those areas. Like the head, for example, uh, is the weak point, and also where like the, the the like the poison breath comes from. So I made that very like bright, whereas most of the rest of the body is going to use dark colors. And I'll probably make like the claws like like white and bony as well, but the but the arms themselves will stay dark. And uh, yeah, stuff like that. And. Something else I want to do is I want to draw another NPC, one that has been highly requested by our team, um, uh, Crazy Ali. She's kind of a, a zombie VTuber. She has, she's very cool. She has a nice per she, she she's so sweet. She has a she has a nice personality, and mm, so I can see why she is like like very much in demand. Uh, so the first I think I'm gonna start with that um, just to get her out of the way um, for later. Plus her, it's going to be interesting to see how I could simplify her design uh, to fit, to be like legible in pixel art. Because it's quite, it's quite complex. So this is what she looks like. Um, I like how like one of her defining features is that she has a sword like through, through her head. <laughs> but yeah, she's got like the tattered clothes and everything. So, uh, I do want to grab, uh, the color palette. And then we'll bring it over, uh, and then get started. So, I, I always start with bringing the palette over. Okay, so we're gonna get, like, two, two black colors here. One for highlights, and then one for the darker spots. ba, -ba. Okay. What other colors do we want to grab? I guess we could grab this, like, tan color here. Uh, and then... can grab this color here. Yeah, I wish I could add friends to the game, but I, re I really want it to, like, be, like, consistent with, like, Hololive lore. Uh, uh, okay. Add some of this pink in, um, and I, is that the hair color that I have? Yes, I do. Um, so let me just get like a darker red. I 
and let's grab um, the skin color. Is that too similar? Well, let's get the highlight. And then she's got like patches of like purple. Actually, I could just do that, I think. Putting myself in the game as a cameo. We could do team members, but like we would be represented by like Hololive mascots, I think. I think that would be the way to go. I think it'd be a cool little Easter egg. Maybe we would show up on the credits or something, depending on how that works. Okay, uh, are there any other colors um, that we need? I think we got all of them. I mean, there's her little bear mascot, which is super cute. That's pretty much it. Oh, right, the eye colors. She has, like, crazy eyes in, in the best way. Like, like look, look at the contrast between, like, the red and the teal. So I'm gonna grab this color. I'll just grab one, like, green color. I don't, I don't think I need, like, to go too crazy with it. And then I'll grab the yellow. <clears throat> okay. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, maybe someday I could do like a pixel art stream, like another one like I did uh, for my first first ever pixel art stream where I drew like other VTubers outside the context of the game. That might be fun. And it would give me an excuse to draw Rose Doodle because I really love her design. I've been watching her like like more often recently. Hmm. Okay, uh, Pixel Alex and Spacey. Oh, yeah. Well, Mike says, are there any color limitations that you're sticking with? I try not to have more than, like, I don't know, 16 colors in an NPC sprite, unless, like, absolutely necessary. Uh, okay. But it's fine if we go anywhere from, like, 16 to, like, I don't know, like, 24. I'd say maybe she has, like, Pekora's height. So... I'll just, like, draw her right like right next to here. <clears throat> Alright, so this is gonna be tricky, but I think we should start... <coughs> <coughs> oh my goodness. Just start with the body. Um... Let's see, what kind of head shape do I want to base her off of? I guess we'll just start drawing and see how it goes. How high is Picora's? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Okay. Da 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 da. I've seen some really good um, pixel art of Ollie and um, that simplifies the design, so it is quite possible. You just have to think about the, the way that you can do it that's best um, for your style. Alright, so... Let's just start with the front like hair bang here. It like, starts at the eyes, I think. I'm gonna pull her up on my secondary monitor, actually, so I don't have to keep flipping between windows. Uh... Okay, let me move this. Alright, sweet. She's got kind of like this, I guess. I was listening to Bardcore before the stream started. Kind of makes me want to add, add like a Bardcore playlist <laughs> for pixel art. What is Bardcore? Basically, like you know that kind of like like medieval taverny music. Basically, like remixes of modern songs. Like Bardcore is like like remixing modern songs to like fit 
inside a medieval tavern with the same kinds of instruments that they used, used in uh, ye old times. There's one that I just like listened to that is like a, a mix of dragon forces through the fire and flames and it sounds so good. It, like predictably like it sounds more, like more relaxed than the original. But but oh my gosh, it's such a vibe. Yeah. Okay, uh We've got, like, a smaller one up here. Oh, okay, this is already proving to be challenging, because she's got so many, like, color variations in her hair bangs. So I kind of have to decide which ones I want to keep. Oh my goodness. Yeah, like, I've noticed that Ollie is definitely one of the talents in Hololive that interacts the most directly with her fans. If you post uh, Ollie fan art on Twitter, it's not a matter of if she'll retweet it, but when. She's kind of like Narissa Ravencroft in that regard, where they're like, she will find you. Even if you don't, like, tag, tag her community. She just likes to, like, casually browse through uh, Twitter, and she just, like, absolutely loves any, like, fan stuff that people make of her. Okay, so she's got kind of this funky little, um, what is that called? Like, little piece of hair up at the top. Okay, so there's this. <clears throat> I noticed that she also has, like, a darker part of her face that, like, her face is, like, pretty much, like, stitched together and, like, right down the middle. Diagonally like this. <laughs> T-Birch! Hi! Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Raiders! We're doing, we're doing pixel art drawing today. Okay, so she's got this eye. <clears throat> And then this eye here. And let me grab an eye color here from Pecora. She has a very thick eyeshadow too. Hmm. We'll get there. Something like that, I guess. Hmm, I need a highlight. <clears throat> like in the center, maybe. That's the thing with eyes, you always want to have, like... <laughs> you really want to try and get a highlight in just to make the eyes feel more lively. Because even though she's dead, <coughs> she is, like, a character. And it just, like, makes a character feel, like, a bit more expressive when they still have, like, those shiny eyes. I'll fix it later. <coughs> Let's see, she's also got that, like, giant bow in the back of her head. I don't want her to look tired. I know she has kind of, like, makeup down here. But I want to avoid, like, the look of, like, a tired face. Maybe I could move the face down a little bit more like that. I think that's a little bit better. <clears throat> and she's got fangs. 
I'm not sure if I want to draw the fangs though. But I could maybe add like just a slightly darker color um, to act as a seam between both halves of, halves of her face. Wait. Um, I'm not really sure how I, how I would explain that, Mike. Like, it's pretty much the same as hanging out with any other group, like any other creative group that you're a part of. <clears throat> we just have to be a bit more mindful about what we share to the public. I think that's the biggest difference. But, like, I absolutely love working in a team. Because, like, the whole process of, like, sharing ideas with each other is just, like, so, like, enriching. She's got this, and... She's got, like, pink frills at the end of the bows. Ah! Ah, Fluffle Pimp, hi! Hope you're doing well. Now, most of these weren't drawn by me uh, initially. I did the base sprites, but then Ward came in and like really refined the designs. <clears throat> so I'm doing another base sprite today. Well, let's do this. Kind of like add a bit of texture to the ribbon. And I guess at this point I could start filling in like her big hair buns. And then we'll just, we'll just see what feels right. I'm gonna start just by making them circles just to see like how big we should make them. I think they actually are pretty big. Like I've noticed that they actually just kind of like go all the way down to her chin. And they're just kind of like this. Something like that, I guess. Um, then we do this. And I guess here, uh, we could add like a stripe here. Her hair is appropriately enough, crazy. You don't get to work in teams, Mike, due to the nature of how you're trained to handle tasks, huh? <clears throat> yeah, like, it's not for everybody. But, personally, I find that, like, I am way more efficient when I'm working, like, alongside people. Since it gives me, like, more opportunities to play to my specific strengths. Okay, so we do this. Add a, add a straight hair up here. Mm. Let's add another straight hair. I don't want it to be too big. Pretty good, I guess. Alright, the other side, um... Pretty similar, I guess, but there's more, um, there's more gray in it than red. So I might be able to use a shortcut here and... Use the, the left hair bun as kind of a a base. Um 
Yeah, the hair strands are different, so I'll just, like, redo them. Whoops. Okay, so how does this go? I wonder if Cirx is going to show up. Because out of all the team members, he's the biggest Ollie fan. Well. Do I have a darker pink than that? No. I'll make do. So there's this. Uh... <clears throat> So let's add some more pink here. <laughs> Do I like drifting racing games? <laughs> oh, yes, my favorite racing game series to play is Ridge Racer. And Ridge Racer is famous for its highly exaggerated drifting mechanics. I'm quite good at it. <clears throat> in fact, I streamed um, Ridge Racer 7, and pretty much I'm um, pretty much in the end game for that. And I also streamed um, Ridge Racer Type 4, and I beat all of the story campaigns in that. So this goes here, I guess. <clears throat> well, let's put this here. Uh, I... Thunder Force is a name that I've heard, but I don't know anything about it. Oh, let's move this, like, over here, I guess. No, actually, that's fine. I'll just put, like, a hair strand here to balance it out. that, I guess. <clears throat> oh my goodness, what wild hair. I'm gonna darken this. Oh no, it's all good. You're good. It's Ridge Racer! Ridge Racer! Ridge Racer! Okay. I'm sure I could do better with the hair bangs. <clears throat> I think what I need to do is make them darker and then add like a shine. To really make them pop. like that, I guess. And I can do the same thing over on this side. Like that. <coughs> oh my goodness. Way, I guess. <clears throat> oh, you saw an ad from Humble with a bundle of rally drifting and car wrecking games? Oh, sweet. I'll have to check it out later. <laughs> There's quite a few racing games that in my backlog, too. <laughs> like, I haven't played the Hot Wheels, the new Hot Wheels game yet, either. Okay, how should I handle next size? I think 
I'll go like this. And then I've noticed we've got like a little collar here with a heart on it, which in our case will just be a single pixel. <clears throat> Yellow taxi goes room. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, okay, this is kind of torn here. And her body is kind of like, like patched up in different parts, um, but I'll worry about the patches later. I just want to get like the basic shape in. Uh, also, she has a giant bow, like right here. Something like that, I guess. <clears throat> well, it's a big bow, very big. And we've got like the big like strands too. Uh, one's bigger than the other. Shoo! <laughs> hmm. Okay, that's kind of like... That's fine. Something like that. And then we got this over here. Huh. Posted a link to Yellow Taxi Goes Room on Discord. Okay, I'll check it out. Uh... Oh, cool. <laughs> I'll get you. Let's see. So, she has these, like, poofy sleeves, too, I've noticed. Let's add that poof. Poofy sleeves with tiny red bows. Uh, let's add the highlight on the, that side, actually, just to make it more easily distinguished. Let's add that seam. It's wolf parts. Make the poof bigger. Really make it poofy. And I notice there's kind of like a pink underside to these. Hmm. It should be good. Need to move up the arm a little bit. It looks a little long. There you go. 
Excellent. And this kind of goes here too. Something like that. do the arms at some point. Maybe I could make them more like Pecoras. Oh, right. Also, most people have, um, even if your hair is, like, tied up short, like, you want to add a little bit of, like, hair along the neckline in the back. Um, just to make it feel a bit more voluminous. And I kind of want to push this forward. And yeah, I I think I want to go for kind of a Picora type pose. So let's move this up to match. We'll use that as like a base and we can just we can vary it a little bit depending on what we want to do. this smaller. And she's got little bows on her wrist too. Yeah, a person like um, Don was our uh, associate producer and helped a lot with the with the coming up with the story and script. Um, and we thought it was cool that she kind of like had ideas to kind of like tie like the story of Bakanawa into like Filipino mythology. She's got like bandages wrapped around this arm. But I'll draw, like, the arm first. Let's vary it a little and make, like, a, the back arm kind of have, like, a Chloe-style pose like this. I'll push it down here. Oh, thank you for care combo, Dark Moon. I shall take Sippy in a bitty. This arm actually is, like, patched up. <laughs> like a patched up piece. Ah, 
how did the shading on that look? Okay. I should probably move it down a little bit. So it looks less like a dinosaur claw. Alright, I'm gonna... <clears throat> take sippy and stretchy. Hmm. Good sip. Oh, <sighs> thank you all. Thank you so much. Ooh, okay. I think I need now to. I want to add hair highlights to like the the hair buns. Better. Just to round them out a bit, I also want to... Okay, yeah, I like the face being a bit rounder there. My wingies out? Okay, <laughs> whoopsie. Uh... Oh my goodness, Doki Bird has an, uh, a sponsored PC case. It actually looks really cool. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy for her. Doki Bird's been popping off lately. Ah, uh, okay. Let's do this. Yeah, Zerk's just posted something <clears throat> in the team server, so I wonder if... <laughs> I wonder if he knows. I wonder if he knows that I'm making drawing his OC. Oh, I noticed that there's also belt buckles at the end of the ribbons. At the ribbon straps. I'll go ahead and draw those there. And she's got like these buttons here too. <clears throat> oh, hi Don, hello! Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> I feel like the ribbon's getting a little... <clears throat> I need to fix the perspective here. Something like that, I guess. Okay, so now the skirt. This is gonna be interesting. Because it goes like this, and then like it kind of like sweeps downwards like this. Um, except like it's all ripped and tattered, which I'll worry about that after I get the basic shape down. Uh, it's a little too low. I'm gonna raise it a bit. Whoopsie. I try to make the legs reasonably long, because it, it makes for like a more like heroic build. Spacey's approach to character pixel art is interesting, different from what you're used to seeing. Yeah, yeah, I just, I love how everybody has their own process and that often works better for them than like following like a different process. It's always an interesting thing to think about. E. That's why it's so important that you have to like, that you allow yourself to discover things on your own rather than just like, you can imitate other people at first, um, but eventually you'll find something that like works for you. I'm just- I'm just gonna tell Xerx that I'm drawing a Zoshi. <laughs> uh, hey 
Shade 6, I'm drawing your Oshi on stream right now. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes. I'm only in about like three minutes. Tops. That, oh yes, he knows. He knows now. He responded. Yep, there you are. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Do you approve so far of the progress? <laughs> yeah. I, I told everybody that you'd be here three minutes tops from the time that I posted. Zoinks. So let's do this. So far, so good. Let's go. I'm just going to make two X's because then after that, it's not distinguishable as an X. That's the quickest zooming you ever did see. Me ah. <laughs> too. Uh, I should move this out a little bit more. So now we I don't strictly have to follow like the the pattern of the tatters. I'll get I'll just like improvise based on what looks good at this resolution. Hearing this wants to you to Makes you want to add more Mega Man music to your playlist? I want to add more Undertale in my playlist. I gotta think about that. Actually, I could probably add some now. I have the game. I could just put the files in. I just need to do the metadata. Actually, I'll wait. I'll download an OST later that has all the metadata in it already. Yeah, Core! I, I, I love when Core pops up in your playlist. But the, the, the interesting thing about Core is that I noticed that the pitch is like a half note off um, in the base file. Like when it's played in game, like the pitch actually is like shifted slightly. And the same is true for Asgore's theme. And, and both of those uh, songs are two of my favorites in the whole game. So I definitely want to um, get versions of them that have that pitch shift. Yeah, like, I for, for a while, actually, after my playthrough, I liked um, Dime's bo boss theme the most, but, like, Asgore, like, really started to grow on me. I just have a soft spot for boss themes where you can hear, like, the tragedy in it. But, like, you can hear the tragedy in it, but it's subtle enough that, like, you can just enjoy it as, like, a, as, like, a pulse-pounding final boss theme without knowing the context. But if you know, then it just like adds like a whole different layer to it. That's how I feel about um, the song for the final phase of the Murga fight in Free and Planet 2. Mm. Alter Sky! Hi! I, I gotta, I gotta, want, I gotta, I do wonder, did Zerk summon you? <laughs> but, oh, thank you so much uh, for stopping by. It's nice to see you. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, Alter Sky is another uh, another hardcore Ollie fan uh, who has actually made some Ollie fan games on itch. They're quite charming. They're just like small little games that only take like a few minutes to play through. Da -da -da. I still feel like the skirt. I went like too far with the skirt. Uh, it's gotta be shorter. It's gotta be like like the short. I like how short skirts kind of like imply sassiness in a character. It's quite interesting. Oh, dark red. Hi. You did. Oh, nice. <laughs> But yeah, feel free to kick back if you'd like. I 
I like how in uh, that new Hollow Life fan game that just came out, Hollow, Hollow X Break, I know that Dev wants the X to be silent, but that's just like the creator of, of GIFs. Like how he said that it's pronounced GIF. Exact same thing. So I, I refuse. <laughs> Unless it's a sign of respect, in which case I will. Um, but anyway, in that game, uh, there is kind of like a side quest in the beach area where you have to um, carry Ollie's head back to her body. You can use it as a melee weapon, but if you hit too many enemies with it, it disappears. It breaks, basically. <laughs> so you have to keep it safe until you get her, get it to her head. And if you do if you do that, you get like lots of bonus money. That's, that's a common theme that I've noticed with friendly zombies where um, like they'll lose their head at some point and you'll ha and the, the protagonist will have to like carry it around. I reminded of the one uh, in uh, um, the first Hocus Pocus movie too. Uh, this, this one. Characters that are able to lose their head, literally, your beloved. Nice. W indie games? Oh, yeah, I agree. Now that you mention it, Mike, um, Ollie does have Roddy Top's energy. So that would be a good reference point if you aren't familiar with Ollie. I, oh, I like how complete by coincidence I drew the red bow that is there. So this could actually be the red bow and I can make the stitches um, just a single pixel. Something like that. <clears throat> Do I know the VTuber Lime Malicious. Uh, is that one of those like tutorial VTubers that kind of like teach other people how to get into VTubing? Um, okay, so I kind of want to make the hair buns a bit bigger. I think I made them too small. Uh, also, I want to improve the silhouette a bit, so I'll make the... the Like the arms a bit thinner so it reads better in silhouette mode. Do you like that? Let's see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I like that. A little, a little increase size by two pixels. just smooth it out a little bit just so that we got that round shape also I love that her fan mascot design is literally just the one of her hair buns and it has a face on it they're called zomballs <laughs> and like the fan the fans kind of rolled with it and like the implication is that she sheds her hair buns every once in a while and every time she does uh, a new uh, a new zomball is born It's Ridge Racer! Yeah! Ridge Racer! It's Ridge Racer! Just a little pop, yeah! I had a, I had a, a funny idea that the Zomballs could be enemies in the stage that she appears in, and they would just b bounce around randomly, but they could latch onto you and slow you down. Ah, uh, no. Uh, we want we want to keep the silhouette in mind. 
And then uh, I also want to make the bow larger. So we kind of do this. Uh, well, okay. Uh, how, how did I do this? Uh, I think I did this. This over here. It's sometimes uh, a little fun to just chuck creatures at things and they make fun funny little noises as, as they fly. Uh, admittedly, I found myself throwing the pigs in that one town in Wind Waker. Yeah, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't know about that? Because, like, when you pick them up, they, they kind of got, like, like gas clouds coming out of them. So I'd chuck them in the water and give them a bath. Um... Okay, I have an idea. I could kind of, like, line these a little bit with a highlight to make them pop a bit more. Something like that, I guess. And there's actually like one more layer underneath this one uh, that's like a pink skirt. So we'll, we'll, we'll just draw that and then if it ends up making the skirt too big again, I will go ahead and adjust accordingly. Ba 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 ba. Da 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 da. Let's add a hole here. Uh, let's add one. Let's add one here too. No, it doesn't look like a hole. It's hard to make this look tattered at such a low resolution, but I'll do my best. this up here and then I'll use uh, I think I really need like a dark pink color I'm gonna go back to her character sheet grab this it's gonna help a lot da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. So here we've got like uh, go this way. Uh, let's see how that looks filled in. <laughs> oh yeah, you're talking about um, a person. You're talking about the NPC Lindsay in the Balsphere lobby, where she kind of like talks about like these evolution video games that are kind of like spoofs on real ones. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so I just need to shorten it yet again. Something like that. Cool. Uh, we'll extend this downwards. 
Because this side needs to be like noticeably longer, I notice. Yeah, I had a call with my dad earlier and it sounds like he's had a pretty crazy week in a not so good way. So I hope he's doing better. I hope things get better down there soon. But on the plus side, he did, um, he did, like, put the finishing touches on, like, our tax stuff. So that's all set. <laughs> Apparently, if you overpay, uh, instead of getting, like, a tax refund, you can just put it into next year. So I decided to do that. So if things pan out, then I won't really have to pay anything, uh, in taxes next year. Because it'll all, all be already taken care of. So I figure that's pretty much like the equivalent of getting the refund and then just like paying taxes again. Because either way, it's it's going back in. Yeah, it is really neat, Edge Drive. I figure since like we're probably going to get a little bit extra income from Free Implant 2, then it should be okay. Okay, so there's this. Uh, I want to move this down a little bit. I want to. I want the pink to feel a bit more connected. All right, yeah, I think that's good. I'll I'll add a hole up here, I guess. Uh. <clears throat> Sounds like you paid thirty percent instead of the default fifteen. <laughs> oh, oh no no no! I've been doing this for a long time, like um. It's just that it's difficult when paying estimates, it's difficult to predict what we'll make in a given year because it fluctuates so wildly for us, especially in the in the game industry, if you work in the game industry, because um, a lot of games take many, many years to create, but then you get like a big payoff at the end. Um, so it's almost like being like a musician and kind of like, like having uh, income based on gigs that you get. Uh, she maybe is a bit short. So I'm gonna make her a bit taller. And that should give us enough leg room. I'll push that over here. Uh, so now the legs, I guess. Uh, generally... Since we have so many characters now, I like to base the legs off of, like, somebody else. Just to save on time. Plus, like, it already looks good that way. I just need to change the color. So, let's try basing it off Ame's legs. See how that goes. Okay, so for Ollie's legs, she has the same, like, patchwork body parts here. The way her body is patched into sections, uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, this part's patched. There's a little bit of pink down here, I see. Actually, it's purple. More purple than pink. But whatever, we'll, whatever, we'll, we'll do pink. Oh yeah, Sally. Okay, so I guess here we can make, like, her shoes. She has mismatching shoes. She wears a different shoe on each foot, which is kind of interesting. Uh, on her left foot uh, is like... Kind of like... Dorothy slippers, almost. And then on the other one is like a, like a taller boot that is black in color. But it has like a red, uh, red sole. So 
so I'll do that. Um, so let me do this. Uh, and it's got like red shoelaces too, but uh, I don't know how I feel about drawing shoelaces at this resolution. So much like how she has bandages on this uh, arm, which I forgot to draw. Hold on. Yeah, I like that, I guess. Um. <clears throat> There's a whole lot of bandaging up here. <clears throat> this design is the most zombie of designs. <clears throat> yeah, asymmetry. <laughs> There's a lot of asymmetry in how I've VTuber models. And it's definitely something I don't mind making concessions with. If it just helps with um, actually drawing them, like, and animating them. But for some characters, like, the asymmetry is such an intrinsic part of their design that I do try to keep it if I can, if it's not too complicated to do so. Then we've got like this part right here. Ah, uh, I think I think it's a little too long still. The skirt. Maybe on this side I could try shrinking it just on this side. Also, I should be flipping my canvas regularly. Just something I've forgotten to do up to, this, up to this point, so that could help me as well. Why is this like this? Okay. That should look a little nicer. Um, I feel like I might help if I went a little less wild with the with the pink parts. So I'll try raising this a bit. All right, let's try canvas flip. Uh-huh. Okay. So like eyeshadow. Okay, I think that looks a little better. Oh yeah, person. Like, I remember, like, not really knowing what to do with the way with like lilac's ha hairband, like in her in her Freedom Planet one design specific specifically, that's one of the reasons I assume Tyson Tan kind of like reworked uh, her to have like actual hair. 
<laughs> and it took me a while to kind of like adjust my mind to her new look, but I'm glad that we stuck with it. Joe Brun, hi! Hope you're doing well. Okay, I want more contrast with this part. Alright, I think that's fine. No. Put this down here. Okay, I notice there's a bit of, like, bandage showing here. Well, there's a bit of a gap there. Um... I'm gonna darken this a bit. I'm trying to think in terms of, like, silhouettes right now. Cool. close. Well, I do want... to narrow it just a bit more. over here just in case I mess up. So I want to take Oops. No, I want lasso. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, the feeling when you select the wrong tool. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, let's compare her to some other characters, height-wise. I think that's a good starting point. I definitely do want to... Maybe... Okay, I got an idea. I 
I think what I need to do, I think proportionally, like the torso and the dress and everything are where they need to be. I just need to make everything smaller. So that like the head to body to leg -like ratio is more similar to the other characters. So something like that, maybe. Whoops. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy this, um, just so... In case we don't like the way it looks, we can always go back. I think it's looking pretty nice. I think it makes for a stronger silhouette, too. I'm gonna put this here. Okay. I think we need to... Alright, I'm gonna flip the canvas again. Move some of that down there. Just add a little bit more of that black color. Nice. Yeah, it is a challenge, Mike, to recreate such complex designs in pixel art, so you definitely have to take some creative liberties to, like, simplify things. Mm, let's take this off. down a bit. Kind of give some extra space here too. Now what's this extra arm like? I noticed there's a bit of pink there too. Something like that, I guess. I'm gonna move it over even more. Okay, um... I think that's an improvement. <laughs> Sprite looks so cool, huh? Thank you, Alex. Can I add her fang in? Okay, yeah, that looks better. With the fang. I'm gonna flip this. And I kinda wanna add this too. Yeah, it's better. Who's Florida man? Is he a Mega Man or Robot Master? <laughs> Oh, whoops, wrong one. I want this one.
I could maybe move the leg over just a little bit here. Why? Oh, is there a way through a keyboard shortcut to increase your brush size? I think that's what happened. I could also draw the sword that's going through her head. That might be fun. Okay, it's going like between her eyes. Like that. Firehead engine, hi! All this work work looks awesome. This kind of pixel art is like a magic for you. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Like it always surprises me, like because it just feels so natural to me because I've done it for so long. So it's always nice to hear that it just like looks so interesting to people. like that, I guess. All the way over to the other side. <laughs> oh, that looks silly. But it is a part of the design. I could make the like the stray hairs on the hair buns a bit smaller. Just to kind of make it look a bit nicer, I guess. Move this right here. thing I want to test now is like how does this look in silhouette form? I don't know if there's a shortcut for it so I'm just gonna fill in the, the whole palette with whoops other than transparency. I think it's a pretty strong silhouette like you can tell who it is. I just want to like straighten up the hair a little bit here. It, uh, Mike says, is your preferred tile size to work with 32 by 32? I do like working um, in multiples of eight. Doesn't necessarily have to be 32 by 32. But that is uh, one of my favorite sizes to work with uh, in terms of tiles. Like the tiles, all the tiles uh, in, in this game in particular are 32 by 32. Right, let's do that.
I think that looks pretty good. Nice. Very nice. I think I think I'm getting better at making base sprites. To the point where like like if I pass them off to other team members to polish up, they usually don't have to do as much. You're so good. Ah, thank you. So with Ollie, who else have we not made? I think we need we need to make Toa now. She's a pretty notable character uh, in World of Chaos. So let's do Toa next. Um. These are so strong, and the way you simplify them makes their special attributes pop. Uh, thank you. Yeah, like, I can't take all the credit. Like, like the original model artists, of course, are, like, the MVPs for making such appealing character designs that can be simplified in a way that still makes them recognizable as who they are. Oh, my goodness. Alright, so... Now I need to find a reference for Toa. Uh, do I have one? No, I need to look it up. Okay. Thankfully, there is a uh, VTuber wiki that has so many VTubers in it. Even I'm in there. Um, props to Lancelot for making my page there. <laughs> uh, is this her? Okay, yeah, this is her. She's so cool, and she has, like, a powerhouse voice. Like, if you ever hear her singing, you'll be absolutely blown away. So I'm gonna grab, um... her reference sheet. Let's see. No, I don't want to save in WebP. No, 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 no. Whoever invented WebP needs a, a stern talking to. Shanata, 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 Okay. All right, I got it. Um, so this is Toa. Her color scheme is very cool. She has a bunch of really cool outfits too, but um, I we do try to do the default outfits whenever possible, just because that's like the most like iconic, I suppose. So. Uh, I also have another sheet of her that should have uh, a color palette reference. It does. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna close uh, a few other windows just to make room. Okay. Well, she's got a little kitty mascot too. I wonder what that guy's name is. Okay. Yeah, I have a plugin for Chrome um, that will allow me to save uh, images in any format that I choose. I just have to remember to right-click the image instead of selecting Save As to select that tool. Ba 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 ba. Uh, got this, got this. This doesn't include shading, so I'm gonna have to improvise with that. Also, I'll need skin color. Uh, I'm just gonna move this down here. Oh, 
Now we've also got this like off-white color for her jacket. So we'll grab a couple of colors from there. Ba -ba -da, da -da, da -da. You love the mascot hat? Yeah, me too. Her mascot's named BB. No. Oh, Mike, this uh, is... Uh, what's her full name, actually? Um... Yeah, it's 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 Toa, uh, Tokuyami Toa, from one of Hollow Lives. I think it's she's one of the earlier generations. But she's so cool. Okay, any other shades that I should aim for? I guess with the eyes. I want I want that darker green. Let's go here. Uh, and let's get an even darker green. And that should hopefully be enough. We can just improvise with the rest. Everyone calls her Toa-sama. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I am unfamiliar with like the specifics about like uh, those like Japanese honorifics. So, like, I don't want to accidentally use the wrong one, so I just, like, use, like, just the names. But I, it's something I do want to get better at, um, in the future. Okay, I'm gonna pull her up on the side screen. Oh, thank you for care combo! Okay, I'll take Sippy and Stretchy. But yeah, seriously, I highly recommend um, listening to Toa sing. Like, her voice is, like, so powerful. Like, it's way- it's- it's- it's actually, like, like, when I first heard it, it's, like, way deeper than I was expecting. But, oh my goodness. Is Sama used for older siblings? Um, that would make sense. But I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so, once again, we want to start with the head. And I think we could use Ame's head shape as a starting point. Na 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 na. So, let's copy the skin color first. Sama is more like sand, but gives more respect. Oh, nice. So, Sama's more so godlike status or a high honor. Uh huh. <laughs> that is good to know, but her her respect is well deserved. Ah, uh, she has like more like kind of a slant to her eyes that like gives her an edgy like an edgier look. Um Yeah, yeah, I think like the even the pupils are kind of a dark green. And where are the highlights? I think they're over here. And her bangs are straight in the center. 
That makes things easy. Yeah, she has very straight hair. I wish I had hair this straight, naturally. Well, my hair has kind of a wave to it. Even on my model, of course. <laughs> uh, I do kind of notice... Um, she's got like three colors in her hair instead of two. She's got like the more intense pink as well, and then like there's a little bit of blue in there too. So I'm gonna mix those in. Uh, we also want we also want the hat. Hope you're doing well, buddy. You love wavy hair? Well, thank you. You know, it's been a while. I'll, I'll let my hair down for you all. Ah. Oh, sometimes you just gotta let it loose, huh? Uh, I hope it's not obstructing view of the screen. It doesn't look like it. Okay, we're good. Let's see, how do I draw the caps at, at this at this angle? <laughs> oh hey, it's metallic madness. I like how because the reference is intentional, people are just like loving it. Uh, I kind of want a darker purple color, uh, so let's grab the one from, like, the highlight here. And then we'll also use that to kind of, like, make the back part of her head. Which I think goes like this. Someone did, like, do rap lyrics in one of the, um, videos on YouTube that has that song. That was pretty cool to hear. I mean, not hear, to, to imagine. Okay, let's do that, and then we'll do, like, this other stripe. That's probably fine. Uh, and then we've got like... I might want like a darker color. Darker gray. Just to make this easier. It's not dark enough. Is there a reference for... Um, for how it looks? From the side, the cap. Oh, there is. It, it has almost a beret like curve to it, I notice. Uh, I better flip horizontally just to match the image I'm looking at. Okay, so we've got the horns here.
Nice. Okay. Uh, I think that should be pretty good. I'll move this over one pixel just so that the, the eyes are more apparent. And I think it doesn't tilt up that much. I think it's supposed to go down a little bit more. And then we do something like this. This over here. this over here. Okay, uh... So the hair bangs are supposed to be this, like, lighter pink color. Good colors in this V2B, yeah, I love the color scheme. doing good so far. I want to move this down a little bit, give the shadow a stronger look. Uh, I think maybe we could uh, make this bottom part darker. Oh, I kind of look like the look of that. I don't know if it's legible in terms of the eyes. Yeah, it's a little better. So I'll move this over here. Of a good time now. Uh, thank you, Oblaze. Thank you for hanging out with us. I think the hat needs to be a bit taller. like a stripe there, just to indicate the seam. And there's kind of a seam right here, too. Like a choker with like a hole in one of those chokers with a hole in the middle. I always like the wearing those. Uh
guess it's something like this. Move this over here. like a little circle here uh, and then we've got like the jacket that she's wearing uh, which has um, where's the color palette it has a different shade of pink than the neon pink that she normally uses it's got like a more like subdued pink that's not like quite as like neon bright So we go down here. Okay, so then we got like this, uh, I think. darken this a little bit just so it doesn't pop out as much cute OSC oh yeah I love LaTale's soundtrack I just wish the MLRPG itself was better but it was low-key a pretty big inspiration for Wolfel and I for Freedom Planet 1 soundtrack Okay, so uh, we want our, this to fold like this. Ah. <laughs> yeah, this track is like the Asgore's theme of Freedom Planet 2. She's got big poofy jacket sleeves, which is something I very much am an appreciator of myself. I'd also wear a jacket of that similarity. Uh, okay. So she kind of alternates her nail color between the pink and the green. You two love giant sleeve arms? Yeah! Alright, we have this darker color now that we can use.
Okay, nice. There's kind of a... a stripe here, I notice. There we go. Now it's starting to look like nice and like nicely like cloth folds. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, Sonic Superstars. Like, like it's probably the first game soundtrack in recent memory where it's not like. Like, the quality of the soundtrack is not consistent outside of, like, fan games and stuff. Usually, like, like, when, like, even, even if a game isn't really well, rel well received, usually the soundtrack, like, avoids those criticisms. Like, the, like, you know, like, Sonic 06, Mega Man X6, um, among other examples, where, like, the soundtrack is absolute fire. But the game is absolute on fire. <laughs> so generally, like if a soundtrack is good, the whole soundtrack is good. Because like I th I think in the case of Sonic Superstars, the reason that it's so like inconsistent is just because like that there's such a huge variety between the team members. Oh, right, yeah, Sonic Chronicles is another example. <clears throat> so she's just kind of got hip sway. Let me work on the jacket part with the torso. Oh yeah, Rise of Lyric, it's <clears throat> it's got the kind of soundtrack where like it feels more fitting for like a like a TV show or a cartoon than for a video game. It just kind of goes more for atmosphere, I suppose. Rise of Lyric is just uh, generic Hollywood background padding. Yeah, that, I guess I suppose that's another way of putting it, yeah. Da, da. Yeah, the Sonic Car Boom cartoon is very good. Da, 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 da. Mm, actually, let's move this up. Okay, so... Let's go this way. And she's got like a belly button piercing. Uh -oh. 
And then she's got like these sporty shorts. Oh, hi Joker. Hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you. I felt like letting it down uh, in the middle of the stream. my thingy stream information so I can actually see more. button up and so I can put a, a white stripe here. She's wearing like a white belt over this. Looks like it stays nice and floofy behind her shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, I got big fluffy hair. I also really like the bob cut look. So I like flipping between them every now and then. Okay, so I want to... The texture of her hair uh, in her reference picture, it kind of reminds me of like, like, uh, who's the purple haired one between Panty and Stocking? Is that Stocking? Stocking? Oh yeah. Just like the, the, the purple and pink stripes. It's so cool how there's so many <clears throat> there's so many cameo appearances in this game from different Hollow Life talents. I hope that uh, I hope it's something that's appreciated. Like I hope like it doesn't come across as us just trying to like put in as many cameos as possible because we do try to like integrate them into the story. And like the interesting like the interesting challenge that we have too is that like since there's so many talents and we kind of want to kind of build like a cohesive world in the game um there are of course scenarios where like talents interact that wouldn't like that haven't interacted ever like on stream before so we kind of have to like come up with like interesting dialogue exchanges in that regard without having any like references to um to draw from It does make me kind of nervous, though, having to improvise like that. I, I hope that, like... I hope that that we do right by the talents. Like, I hope that they're the specific way that we portray them in the game is, uh, is seen as respectful. It's something that still kind of, like, gives me anxi anxiety as I work on this. But I try not to let it get to me too much, because, like... I just have to have faith that because this is a project made out of love that they will see that even if like their depiction doesn't quite line up with how they are in their streams. You do have a team of writers on the board to solve that issue. Yeah, they've done an amazing job so far. Yeah. 
And I definitely have, like, a lot of faith in them. Like, oh, they're so much fun to work with. And they've done a, they've done a very good job, like, like, I'd say, like, portraying them properly. So that even if they're, like, talking to, like, characters that they normally wouldn't interact with on stream, uh, it still feels like, 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 the kind of reaction that they would have. Yeah, our writers are so cool, oh my gosh. I'm sure they'll enjoy the writing. Yeah, I hope so. I hope the fans do too. Yeah, again, I try not to worry too much about it, but it's just natural since like I'm the like the producer. Like there have admittedly been like a few uh, instances in the past where like I had like actual panic attacks thinking about it too hard. That's why you never want to um you never want uh to trust what your brain says past a certain hour of the night. So make sure you get good sleep and like try not to like think about stuff too hard before you get like a good night's rest. Also, oh, oh my gosh, Forest Dragon. Let's go. Welcome Raiders. Welcome, welcome. I'm Spacey Bothotelli. I'm a gadgeteer bat and a game developer and I'm drawing um, pixel art of uh, Hollow Life talents uh, for a fan game that we're working on. Ah, oh my gosh. Oh, Meatloaf, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, what were you all playing? I, I love your emotes, too, with, like, the tail lagging and everything. Ah, oh, Toa has such a cool design. Yeah, you're working on your model? Actually, that's so cool! Yeah, I'd love to check it out when it's done, too. Like, I assume that you're just working on the model art right now, and then you'll get it, like, rigged later. But, like, I have mad respect Ridge for... Racer. Yeah! Ridge Racer! Ridge Racer! I have mad respect for VTubers who, like, make their own, like, models. <laughs> Heck, I also have mad respect for VTubers who commission models from artists. Because that means you're supporting some lovely, talented artists. Um, this is... Okay, this is too long, I think. I'm gonna shrink this a little. It's like a bat's in here. I know, right? It's got that... It's got that batty feeling to it. Well, oh, well... Oh. Almost done with the modeling part. It's a 3D model. Oh, let's go! Yeah, I'm kind of a like a, a jack of all trades, I suppose. Where I can do a lot of different things. I can do um, I can do pixel art. I can do music. I can do programming, um, level design, audio design. Uh, but one of the things that I really like still struggle with to this day is 3D modeling. Like it's just like it's just like technical wizardry to me. And it's kind of interesting when you think about, like, the pros and cons of having a 2D model versus a, th a 3D model. I feel like for a 3D model, it's a bit easier to uh, make, like, alternate outfits and stuff. Whereas with 2D, 2D generally, like, it requires, like, less, like... Less, like, equipment uh, to get, like, looking and animating good. Whereas with 3D, you need, like like, like, special tracking software and all that. Silly question, do you count Fidget from Dust and Lizzie and Tail as a kind of bat character? That's a tough one. Like... Honestly, I don't really get bat vibes from Fidget. That's just me, though. Fidget is a Nimbat, which is at least 50% bat. Yeah, but I've never... Like, I haven't played the game, so I wouldn't know, but, um... 
I've never seen Fidget hang upside down. But if Fidget does hang upside down, then that, uh, that gives Fidget, uh, more bat points in my book. You never played Dust? As in never? Nope. And the funny thing is, is... <coughs> when did I buy it? I bought it like in... I think I bought it in like 2000... Uh, 2011? 2012? And it's been sitting in my Steam library ever since. And it's kind of like a hat in time where I just haven't felt motivated to start playing it. But I am playing a hat in time now, so... I have a feeling it's only a matter of time. Ah, Toa's so cool. I keep saying that, but it's true. Toa-sama! Yeah, I was telling my chat earlier. Um... Well, like, she has a powerhouse voice. I definitely recommend, like, listening to some of her singing. Dust was one of the first games you got when you got a Steam account in 2014. Nice! Ah! Yeah, let's roll with it. I'm sure we can adjust this, like, a little bit to make it so it's not, like, straight symmetry. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so here we can just kind of do this part. Yeah, cool. Looking good so far. So I guess we're just doing the legs and the shoes. Which generally is the easiest at this resolution. So let's see, who has a leg pose that is most similar to what I'm going for? I'd say maybe Picora a little bit. Yeah, let's try. But I think I need to redo, like, this leg, for example. Another thing to avoid the symmetrical look is to adjust the color of the hair strands. Oh, that's a good thing to know, too. And actually, let me, um... Push this upwards. I'm gonna make her like a bit taller, too. Yeah, I'll draw the legs from scratch. Oh, Chris, so you played Dust many years ago when you are in your, I'm not a furry, but phase. Since then, you removed, you removed the not and the but from that statement. Oh. <laughs> I Like, even nowadays, I'm like, I'm not a furry, I'm a bat. <laughs> and there was a time where I was out, outright saying, like, um, like, I don't consider myself a furry. I just really like animal characters. 
and then fast forward to when I started VTubing, and now I'm like, oh, I'm a bat. I'm a bat. Bats have fur. That is true. Smorphaz, hi. Howdy, my uh, sensational skeletons. Here's a joke for today. How many tickles does it take to get an octopus laugh? Tentacles. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is very sans. That is, that is like a, a thousand percent sans. Great job. E. So an octopus is always two tentacles short of laughter. Yeah. I'm not a furry butt, says the bat. Yeah, 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 you got me. I wish there were more English words for the phenomenon. Okay. I mean, there are technically, if you if you are reptilian, you're like a scaly. There was a stream I was in the other day uh, where they kind of posed the question, uh, what would you be called? Like, in the same vein as furries and scalies, what would you be called if you were an, in, in, an insect? Hmm. A buggy? Aw, that's a cute one. Okay, and she's got, like, she's got the big sneaks. I like big sneaks. Like, you can just, like, you can just, like, tell by looking at them that there's several sizes too large, but it's just, like, it's just so nice, especially for characters that are active. Sonic the Hedgehog is, a, is one of the most famous examples of a character that wears oversized footwear. Just get good enough. Also, yes, the characters in this game, too. And Jet Set Radio. Like, like, good good footwear is, like, peak, uh, peak drip. Bomb baby, put your baby and rising to the top. Just can't get enough, oh no, get enough. Actually, I think it's more like, like this. Okay, this is gonna be pretty tricky to draw, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of like the of the like super neon pink. You're getting enough. There we go. That's better. Oh, Mike, if you ever became a VTuber, you're going to be a chameleon? That'd be so cool! I don't think I've seen a chameleon VTuber before. I'm sure they exist. But it'd be pretty unique in my book. Oh, baby. I'm getting enough. I just can't get enough. Nice. It looks pretty good. <laughs> I 
Wow. Chameleon with a green screen feature. Oh, that is a cool idea, Hyro. That'd be so clever. Okay, I like how that like looks. So it's just the other like now. Oh, also I should add shading to the black part. That's better. And the colors are kind of flipped around for the other shoe. Which is quite cool. Nice, okay. Oh, Samuel has entered the room. Hello, Sammy. And he just walked right back out. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're so silly, Sammy. He was just he was just like that that Grandpa Simpson meme where he walks into the place. Um puts his hat on the rack and then like turns around and gets his hat and walks right back out. I wonder what we could have done that kind of like made him turn tail. Clearly. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So the, on this leg, there's like, she still has the fishnets, but they're going to go all the way up here. So I'm just going to do this. here. And we're just going to do this. Nice. Gathering. make this a bit wider up here. Alright, so save, let's flip the canvas. Now let's move this over a little bit. Oh, Nero, hi! Hope you're doing well. Hi. a little bit. Is there anywhere I use the blue? Okay, I think there is. Okay. 
So there's Toa. Toa-sama. She might be a bit tall, actually. Yeah, I think she's a little too tall. Uh, so how can we fix that? Uh, where can I compromise? Let's go like that. All right, how are we looking now? Yeah, still too tall. I heckin' love this song, low-key one of my favorites in the whole soundtrack. And luckily on this map there are dialogue exchanges that happen that are long enough to allow it to play out a little bit. One more pixel should do it. But where can we do that? Maybe like right here. Cool. I'm gonna save the original super tall version just in case. So this will be in the extra parts bin. Nice. So we draw on the Ollie and Toa. Now I think after that, um, the only other NPCs that are unaccounted for are. Um, Let's see, Corone, Okayu, and um, Noel, I think. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Why does that girl with the cap look like something that came out of a Pokemon game? Yeah, I could, I could see uh, Toa-sama being a Pokemon trainer. So yeah, like three more characters and then like we're all set. Let's see. Who should I draw next? I could work on uh, the boss because that's kind of like a priority right now. All right, so I'll go ahead and start setting everything up for that. Da -da -da. 
I also worked a little bit on Flare, too. <laughs> like, this was the base sprite that Ward sent me. Uh, like, at the refinements to the sprite that I made. Um, I decided to put the legs out a little bit to give her a more action-y, like, 8 pose. That's something I like to do with action characters uh, in a platform game, especially the player character, uh, that could, because the A-pose makes it easy to tell how far you can uh, walk um, past the edge of a ledge before you fall down. Uh, yeah, Mega Man's a prime example of that, of course. But yeah, I gave her like a jumping animation. Uh, and then I made like some particle wing effects to go with the double jump with like because she has a double jump uh, in the cutscene. I think that's a nice way to add like a little bit of visual flair to make her look more like she's like doing her own thing. And I gave her like a little laugh animation. Yeah. There's actually a couple things that I could do right now. I could work on the Wendigo fight um, the sprites. Refine this a little bit more. I could also work on some base sprites uh, for Alter Laplace, who is the main villain. Uh, e e you saw a straight pixel on the laugh animation? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that is because when I have the pencil tool out, it kind of like. It kind of like has like a straight pixel right there. Well, okay. Uh. Who's the main villain? Uh, it is an alternate timeline version of Laplace. I will show you. Uh... Uh, which which one is it? Hold on. Is it this one? Okay, yeah. So there's for comparison. There's Crony, and then there's Laplace as she normally appears. And then, like, the Alter Timeline version is where she's lost her shackles that were restraining her power. And, uh, she has, like, truly taken the form of, of Laplace's demon. Um, which is, like, someone who has, like, the knowledge of everything that will ever happen in the universe. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, we actually do... Uh, Ward did, uh, finish her, her idol animation. Which looks quite cool. Uh, it's very menacing and imposing. He also is working on the aisle animation where she's holding her sword out. So I was actually thinking um, something I could work on are some key poses for some of her other animations. Because she does spend a lot of time in her boss fight, like, levitating. So I think coming up with a cool levitation pose will be uh, a good idea. Okay, so where is the reference sprite? It's just that one. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new frame here. She looks menacingly awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so that's the base sprite. Um, we could do- would she, she- is she the kind of villain who crosses her arms, I wonder? I'm not so sure. But in terms of levitation poses, there's several routes we can take. I will once again employ the stick figure method to kind of make it easier to grasp my head around and experiment with different poses uh, before I commit to one. This okay, um... <clears throat> so we can kind of have like an action line that's like... Like this almost. Uh... So we could go like... <laughs> Stepping out for a while to buy some supplies. 
Ah, uh, no problem, uh, Joru. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Drawing crossed hands in pixel art takes talent. Yeah. Could also go for... Yeah, crossed arms kind of has more like a Ganondorf vibe. So we could kind of go like the opposite direction where she's like... Mm, okay, crossed arms. Um... Okay, that's an improvement. I'll give it another shot. Maybe have her puff out her chest a little bit. Although I kind of like to lean forward. I could even make her lean even more forward so she's kind of like looking down on whoever she's speaking to. Drawing pixel art with a mouse takes some skill. Oh yeah, definitely. So rather than going down, uh... It could be like this. I I I, I like the smug aura of this one. Whereas this one feels more like she's bored. Yeah, I think this will be a fun base to work from. I don't think that this face is really going to change that much, so I'll just like copy paste it. Big brat energy. Like, even though she has gained height and looks more intimidating, she's still, um, she's still, uh, the plus. So, <laughs> I think if it's the bratty vibe of her to have, like, a lack of patience. Okay, so let's have her puff out her chest. <laughs> New Pokemon on the block with the puff chest. The rugged nest to the bomb, bomb, bomb. Okay, so I kind of for her outfit, I kind of combined. Um, let's see, I have I have some reference sheets of Laplace. So. This is her default outfit. She's actually like, I think she's the shortest member in Hollow Life. Um, yeah, 139 centimeters. So I think it'd be it would have it'd be a nice gag if like when she lost the shackles, she just somehow figured out how to make herself taller. Um, so it's a combination kind of where like the torso is kind of similar, but like after she lost the shackles. Um, she kind of like dropped the sleeves from her default outfit. And this is what it looks like underneath her trench coat, I think. So it's kind of a combination between her default outfit and what it looks like underneath. And I like how it kind of almost gives like a mu mu musical conductor uh, feel to it. Almost, because you got the white. Because I wanted to have like the white collar from her cas from her um, like her casual outfit. So that it draws attention to the fact that she doesn't have her shackles anymore. And the same case with having like the spikes on her shoes where her shackles used to be down there. So that was kind of my thought process behind this, uh, this, this, this outfit design. But I would like to eventually commission some full like actual like full artwork of this outfit. Just so that anyone who like wants to draw like fan art will like have like a good reference to draw from. Okay, so most of it is just in this color again. I'm just gonna go for it. Uh...
Okay, so for this part, I'm just gonna, like... Go this way? Hmm, okay, how would I do this? Like, have her collar kind of poking on that direction? And then she's got, like, the purpley hands. She's more yeetable than ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Laplace is literally a single centimeter shorter than Koseki Bijou. Okay, yeah, this is the other arm that's that's going this way. But we want that to be big. Na 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 ba 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 ba. Is there anything you, that your art has in common? It's that it's a small body, big head. Yeah, I do kind of recommend that for pixel art games, honestly. Um, to ha go for like a at least a pseudo chibi style, almost where um, the head is just big enough that you can um, that the eyes are still legible on the character, so you can still have like nice expressions that way. But it's. it's Granted, it still is possible to have very emotive sprites, even if the face is not visible. Take a look at Castlevania games, for example. Like, the, the sprites of their characters are, like, very realistic human proportions. Um, but, like, it's the gestures that really, like, speak volumes in, in, in those games. The gestures that, like, the, the characters make. Plus, like, emotion in, in, like, Castlevania games is aided by, like, dialogue portraits. Okay, I'm gonna keep going this way. <laughs> oh, look, oh, hi! Was this outfit on your model? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a cup of joe. Alucard's got no face, but dang, is he expressive. Oh, I love Alucard so much. Oh my gosh, like, I haven't... I, pl I played that for the first time on stream last year, and, like, prior to that, the only other Castlevania I had played um, was the original on, on NES. But, oh my gosh, I see why that game is such, like, a beloved classic. Yeah, I'm wearing a sweater dress with no sleeves. Uh, if that's what, if you mean to ask if my model is based on um, the outfit that uh, this character is wearing, no. Oh, uh, what did I do there? Okay, uh. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Okay, from here, I think we can grab, like, the hips. Like, the hip part of the outfit. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna take this and then I'm gonna grab this part. Put it up here. And that should be fine. Whoops. That is not fine. Uh -uh. What? Alright, I didn't merge. That is why. There we go. I'll worry about her hair later. Well, thank you, Mike. I've just saved. Yeah, yeah, like, everyone was telling me, like, <clears throat> once I found the a la carte shield, they told me that I won the game. <laughs> oh, one for nine! Hi! Hope you're doing well. Also, thank you for care combo health, Sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the context X149 uh, is that she's an alternate timeline version of Laplace. Uh, the the normal Laplace will also exist in the game uh, that we're working on. But she's from an alternate timeline where um, she broke her shackles and unlocked, like, the secrets of the universe. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to take Sippy and Stretchy. Oh, Alfie, yeah, I get that. I get that feeling too about the chrysogram. The all car shield, all the chrysogram, pretty much are win conditions, especially in randomizers. Yeah, <laughs> and it's what's really funny to me is that um, when all card became an assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, uh, Sakurai was well aware of that, so he uses the chrysogram as as his attack and as an assist trophy. <laughs> Oh, Loco, yes, my outfit does have, uh, multiple outfits. Uh, I mean, my Mala has multiple outfits. Uh, I can do my sweater, uh, I can do my white dress, uh, and then I can do my coat. My default is all three. But usually for my art streams, I like to kick back with just my sweater dress. <laughs> Her, like, so model, like, yeah! Oh yeah, Dark Moon. I got the God's Garb, which I'm heard I've heard is one like the single rarest drop in the game, to the point where most people don't even know it exists. And I got it w after like the fourth Guardian that I killed. Oh my gosh, Edge Drive! I'm not expecting that to happen, but that would be absolutely crazy if I'd be. I think it would be crazy if La Plush just played the game. Um, just to, just to see what she would actually think about, like, the fact that she's got this alternate timeline version of herself that's the main villain. Okay, so the hip, the start of the hip is up there. So, from here, I think I will, like, kind of, like, imply, like, the start of a, of, like, a levitation animation where the, the, the cloak is billowing. Something like that. And before I lose access to the legs, I will draw them. Uh. You love the cross arms pose? Ah, thank you. I could, uh, cheat a little here since, like, the silver part's right where the knee is. So I could grab this, uh... And then I could use, uh, the Rot Sprite feature, and then... 
got ourselves a nice shortcut. So... <clears throat> I, I want the, uh, the boot to kind of rotate a little bit more than that. No, 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 okay. Let's try that again. Rotation acts a little weird at this size of pixel art. Nice. Okay. I think this silver part goes past the knee. It would make sense, I guess. The Medusa shield drop rate is 1 in 1,250? Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's the back leg. The front leg's gonna be mostly the same, pose-wise, I think. The, 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 the boot is just gonna, like, tilt downwards more. And I know that Ward is currently working on some Alter Low Plus animations, so I hope working on these keyframes will be a good help to that. Oh, sorry. I forget about my toggles sometimes. to use fast rotation for just so it retains its thickness. Yeah. Actually, let me darken the colors on this first. Down, down. Um... Hi. Oh, it does kind of <laughs> give Magneto fives almost. draw the hair to see how I want that to feel. Whoops. Uh. Nice. So then they have the urge to eat some melon bread. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, from here, let us add this part of her coat. This part too. I'm gonna go this way like that. So yeah, that was my first idea for a pose. a little bit. Egg! Yeah, low-key one of the best songs in Mario Galaxy 1. Magara there. Let's add some more. Okay, so I think next maybe, um, hmm, trying to think. Since she levitates a lot, maybe we could use some um, some poses where she aims in different directions. Like where she's still floating in the air, but she kind of like like is directing her magic in like different directions. I could imagine something like that. So in that case, uh, let's experiment. Merga is a good example of what I want to do in terms of, um, in terms of like levitating in place and like aiming stuff in different directions. We got so much mileage out of that, and I think that's going to serve us very well uh, for the boss uh, fights with Alter Laplace. Hmm, so how would I do this? Uh, she also has a sword that she uses. So maybe we could have her, like, do the aiming, like, with just one hand, and then she, that will allow her to keep the sword in the other hand. Hmm.
One shortcut that we could use is for her to kind of have a pose like this. Um, I'll use this as an example. But she just kind of like turns her head the other way. Like you can kind of feel it already. Like if you make them turn in the opposite direction, turn their head in the opposite direction that their body is facing. Uh, and then you could see that maybe like her hand could just like outstretch from here and that already adds like a really good action line. That's something that I do uh, with one of Crony's um, cutscene poses, actually. Uh, let me pull up her pose sheet real quick so I can show you. So this is Crony's cutscene poses. Um, but she has this one right here. All I did was take her idle sprite, um, like the first frame of her idle sprite, and I flipped it horizontally, but I kept her face facing this way. And I just like lifted her hand, so she's pointing her sword in a threatening way. Like that's such a such a, such a cool and simple trick you can do to kind of like save yourself some work if you're making like actiony stuff. So like you can imagine here, I'm gonna remove the cross arms. So she'll like maybe like hold the sword like this. Uh. And then she'll be like. Yeah. See what I mean? You need to make your blows up emo? Yeah, you should. I like how that's just like a that's just a meme in your channel now for like just the most random of reasons. Yeah. Yeah, so something like that. Um Okay, let me fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the cross arms once again. Now I know that the pose that um, <clears throat> that Ward is currently working on has her with her hands outstretched already. So I'm not going to put too much work into this just because I might want to recycle that. Daddy Elk! Hi! Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for the follow, I appreciate it. Yeah, so like she kind of like outstretches her hand like this. Dark Moon, thank you so much for the care combo. All right, I'll take Sh Sippy and Stretchy. Oh, uh, one second. I kind of want to move the hand a little bit. To be like that. There you go. What color do I use? Okay, I use that one. And I'll just reuse the hand from here. Ah. Uh, oh, I just remember my oldest niece is coming to visit tomorrow. Mama Spacey and I haven't seen her uh, in quite a long while, so it's gonna be nice. We're going to spend the whole day together. 
we'll, we'll just we'll just chill out. She's at that age now where she's pretty quiet and kind of like keeps her to herself in like an angsty teenager sort of way. But it's all good. Uh, okay, I will do that sippy and stretchy. Well, have fun. Thank you, guys. Drive. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's going through the shadow of the hedgehog time of life. Ah. Uh... What you gonna do together? Mama Spacey has a few ideas. Uh, it depends on the weather because it's been raining the past few days. Um. But it sounds like maybe we could go out to eat at a, rest a nice place, a nice restaurant somewhere. Um, I don't know, maybe watch a movie if there's something good playing at the theater. Well. If I wasn't a super shy bean about showing my um, games to my family, I could show her uh, Freedom Planet 2 on my Switch. But I'm just like way too... Uh, anxious about it. But they know that the game is out there. They can play it in their own spare time. Yeah, yeah, I love that this is the year of Shadow 2, Alex. But yeah, that's kind of the idea I had. Maybe I could do something similar as with that crony pose where she kind of like tilts her head upwards a little bit. So that'd be like for for like firing off magic like straightforward. Um, and then she could have one for like like, maybe one where she kind of, like, raises her hand upwards and then, like, a dark column of energy comes up from, like, the floor or the ceiling. Let's see. Um. Um, terrible at drawing perfect circles. No, I don't want spray paint. Something like that. Uh, I can go this way, I guess. Do like this. Uh... No, 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 no. Okay. I could do better because the tricky thing about doing like a front facing facing pose pose like this where your arms raise upwards um is that because the characters head sizes are exaggerated for the sake of making their facial expressions more apparent um well the head's a lot bigger so that means that in order for you to actually see the hand the arm has to kind of like get longer and that can look really weird if you don't do it right like i'll show you crony poses again uh, I think it's in her victory sheet. So, like, you can see she's got one where she kind of, like, like tosses the golden gear she just collected up in the air before, like, teleporting it away. Uh, at first, I had it to where it was, like, it's, her arm was more straight up, but because she has kind of, like, a pseudo-chibi proportions, uh, the top of the hand was, like, right here. Um, that didn't feel right, so I kind of had to be at the side like this. Yeah, side of the head, exactly, Alex. Hey, 
yeah, so in that case, uh, what we should probably do is just, you know, change it here. Yeah, I'm sure I'll figure, I'm sure I'll be able to figure something out. Um, going, uh, then she could have one where she fires magic straight downwards, which might be fun, um, because all we really have to worry about is the head. Most of her torso is going to be obscured. So I'll, like, draw her head looking down. Uh, why did it do that? Oops. So it's like, wah, wah, wah. I'll just copy paste this. Don't worry about symmetry just yet. So then we could have like. Going straight downwards and then put. Uh, let's move this upwards a little bit. I want to tilt her head a little. Just so you can see a bit more of her arm that is kind of like back here. Yeah, she's kind of doing the, the, the gallop gun thing. Uh, okay, so how do I want to do the legs? Hmm. I guess I could kind of do like. I just like I was I remember I was working on Sky Tops the other day, and I just like because it's like a place high in the sky with clouds. I got the urge to add um, hilltop zone to my playlist. <laughs> Yeah, and then from here, um, like, I want her cape to be back here, just, like, billowing in the wind. It'll add, like, a really add a lot of impact between her cape and her hair. Na, 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 na. Ooh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the hair is going to add so much to this with a sense of impact. Da, 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 da. Yeah, don't worry about shading when you're just like figuring out the pose. Do not worry about shading. Because you're just going to put in work that you're going to overwrite later once you've refined the, the pose that you want. Okay, let's move this up here. Oh, oh. Paige. What do you see, honey? <laughs> what the dog doing? Pledge. Pledge, it's okay. Oh, if I hold control and then scroll my mouse wheel, that's what changes the brush size. That's helpful to know. Yay! Let's go! 
Uh, thank you, Rob, for care combo. Alright, hold on a second. I don't want her face to be, like, completely, like, facing down. I want, like, a little bit of it showing. So it's kind of like... Maybe like that. Actually, I'm just gonna get this whole thing. Page! No barky! Alright, I'll sit being stretchy, you know. Mm. Mm. Nice. Getting all the animal noises this week. Bats, dogs, pterodactyls. <laughs> I, I still can't believe I was asked that question. But, you know. I don't see the harm in uh, obliging. Every now and then. You can imagine Paige just saying, uh, I'm just a dog. She's just a dog. Okay, I'm gonna move this over so it looks front facing. You want a pet doggo? Uh, I wish there was a way to transfer pets, petals, through the interwebs. But at the very least, once I'm done streaming, I can pet them on all of you, all of y'all's behalf. I wish I could figure out a good setup to where, like, I could just have a camera pointing at them during one of my streams. And there could be a redeem where I go over and pet them. That might be fun. But I don't really know how to set it up in a way to where, like... Because they tend to, um... They tend to not be in the same spot all the time. Okay, so these are supposed to be, um... The horns. I'm just gonna draw them real quick. Just so that we know that's what the big, um, splotches are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the clip from yesterday, Evs. Yeah, something like that. Maybe the legs shouldn't poke out as much. But I kind of want to have like a little bit of the torso in still. Like I don't want this to be straight up, um, like a top-down perspective. I can maybe add a bit more face here. Spacey, you got a voice in a dinosaur game now? Yeah. <laughs> well, that'd be cute. Oops. Yeah, so there's going up, going down. Um, could do diagonals, maybe. That might be fun. Depends on what her attack patterns are like. Uh, also, I want to give her a dash animation. A really good dash animation. And generally, the way that I do dashes. Um, just kind of a Mega Man Zero style dash. 
And she's got horns, so it makes sense. Like, she could have a dash where her, her like, horns are, like, facing, like, forward, almost. Uh, I need to look at a reference of Laplace just so I can get the horn angle correct. Love your voice, calming, pleasant, and cute. Ah, uh, thank you, Rob. I've been feeling a, a pretty good about my voice so far. I just need to... I just need to remember to keep hydrating. Just keep chugging water. And to also, like, restrain myself a little bit, not speak loudly all the time. And then it will be something that I can handle and I can still keep it nice and soft. sure I did this correctly. Let me flip. That's the reference I'm looking at. Uh, has the horns going in the other direction. Okay. And I guess in this case we can kind of like imagine how the hair will be. Oh, this is gonna look like a really intimidating dash with the hair. And she'd have like her her hand out, uh, and then like the sword would also be here. Yeah, sword would be the hair. Uh, Alter Laplus fights with uh, Alter Iroha's katana. Um, which is quite the cool touch, I think. Okay, let's see. So we got like the, the this part of the trench coat right here, I guess. Uh, we can just keep going in this direction. You get a Red Bull ad every time you come here. I guess it makes sense. Red Bull gives you wings. Disclaimer, I did not get my wings from Red Bull. Okay, so we can kind of go like this with the, with the legs. She's got like the weird spiky thing in the back of her boot too. Do you want to drop off the stream for now? Been sketching for quite a while and you need a break. No problem, Nice Drive. Thank you for hanging out with us. Just kind of bring the knee up here. And do the same thing. Yeah, I can refine the silhouette at some point, but just kind of like... Just playing around with different poses that she could have. Okay, yeah, so she could actually extend her arm this way, maybe. The 
The weather feels good. Nice. Yeah. I dig. I dig. Bump, bump. So that's something that I could like refine uh, off stream. Um, and then just like just like get like a single frame in of each pose, and that and that will serve like the purpose of having like good keyframes that I can pass along uh, to other team members. So what other cool things could she do? I also want her to have an animation where she kind of like like maybe like throws fireballs downwards. So that could kind of be an extension of like this kind of animation where like instead of pointing her arm downwards like it kind of like she like retracts it upwards and kind of charges energy in it but i do want her to have like more of her face visible in this pose so I'm gonna go ahead and grab these colors. Gimme. There we go. Oh, starting to look nice. Yeah, I really want the eyes to be visible in this animation. Because I like visible eyes do so much um, in terms of like tickling like the, the human brain. They're like, oh, a face, and it makes it it makes it exciting and gives it personality. So here, um, do this. Eyes are good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. under lighting for this because most of the lighting is coming from uh, the attack that she's using. So we'll have the light come up from this direction. extend it like to this part of the hair as well the top of her head want most of the light to come from down here Thank you. All right, I'll take Sippy and Stretchy in a bit. Yeah. Hmm. Good stuff. Well, the, pu the both puppos have have uh, stumbled into the room and they are now staring at me, and they're pushing the office bed. They're like mother. It's feeding time. No, they, you have 20 minutes, Puppels. But I might wrap up a little bit early anyway. 
Just cause I, like, I wanna freshen up, but, like... I might as well, like, make that, like, a good, like, breaking off point. They want a snack? I gave them snacks. They can't bamboozle me. I gave them the biggest, crunchiest carrots. It's so cute how much they love carrots. Like, anytime I give them a big carrot, they're like, oh my gosh. Oops. Okay, it's starting to look like something. push the trench coat out a bit more. <clears throat> Links. Doesn't make any sense now to have these legs here with the trench coat going this high. Uh, I could probably figure it, uh, something out with that later. But now what we could do is... start gradually gradient... gradienting, uh... towards the brightest, like, trench coat colors down here. And we, we could even add a bit of, like, purple. Like, really bright purple. To show that she's, like, firing off energy. And I'll make it a different color than anything that I've been using so far. Nice. Uh... Where's the other color I'm using for collars? Uh, Rob asks, do I feed my doggos manually or with an auto-feeder? Uh, feeder. Uh, I, I feed them manually. Yeah, I'm, I don't think I could ever get used to, like, an auto-feeder. Because I feel like feeding your dogs manually is, like, a good bonding moment, too. Oh, welcome back, Creeper. Uh, we're just chilling. I'm probably gonna wrap things up uh, in a few minutes. Because I should feed my feed myself as well. Almost five. Yeah. Nice, and she has like the purple fingertips. This has been a good week for your health, sorry. Ah, oh, happy to hear that. That's a decent start. I want to work on it a little bit more to really show more of her personality. And how, like, mad she is. <laughs> but, yeah! Oh my gosh. Thank you all so much for the chill stream today. Um, let me see uh, if there's anybody cool we can raid. Thank you for the chill. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay, hold on. Ah, oh, thanks everybody. Alright, let's see. 
Are there any sponsored Freedom Planet 2 streams going on right now? Yeah, somebody, somebody told me that uh, Mari Mari actually streamed um, Freedom Planet 2 uh, yesterday. That was that's really cool. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Um, not familiar with with that VTuber, but I've heard that they're pretty cool. Uh, Oh, Kamiya's playing? Oh, I see, I see now. Okay. Let's read Kamiya. Kamiya Miss Walker. Oh yes, once again, happy birthday to Rob. So, without further ado... Uh, also, wait, our raid message. There we go. Alright. So without further ado, I shall bid you all adieu. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, and I hope you all have the best of weekends. I will be back once again next week with more chill game duffing, and I do want to continue my I Had In Time playthrough as well. Um, maybe play another game or two. We'll see. I should have a schedule up by Monday as always. Yeah, okay, yeah, happy birthday again, and I'll see you all next week. That's a wrap. Bye. 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 Bye.